Uh, no, this is good because we need to talk about these things. And it's bringing awareness to things that have to be talked about. For those of you, for those of us who have wanted to die, and for those of us who have lost people or almost lost people to suicide, we need to talk about that. Hey everybody, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are right now. It's morning time, I have my coffee, it's very early, and I'm excited, it's a brand new day. I get to share more awesome videos with you, so welcome to the ultimate world music reaction channel. I know it may seem weird, I'm talking here about a brand new day and uh, savoring my coffee as I'm about to listen to a song that has a very heavy title. We're going to check out another one by Ren, our awesome friend, amazing songwriter, poet, rapper, singer, guitarist, musician from UK, from Wales. I'm happy that you're here, you guys. Make sure to subscribe, join the team, join the ride. Let's check it out. So a couple of you have already mentioned to get ready. It's going to be heavy that I should bring tissues. I have tissues somewhere in here. Um, the title in itself obviously is already very heavy. I mean suicide, right? We know what that means. We know what it implies, ending of one's own life. That's a heavy topic, but I, I don't want to go into too much detail about what the words itself, what the word itself evokes in me. I first want to hear what Ren has to say. And uh, you guys know we're all about music and psychology, so we're going to talk about the impact of this music, the lyrics, um, and maybe we can pull something out for today. What's uh, interesting personally for me right now is trying to figure out how much from what angle I approach this, right? As human beings, we all have different personality types. Some of us look at things more rational and pragmatic. Others may look at things more emotional and artistic. Sometimes it's a combination of both or something in between. We're all very multifaceted human beings. And so part of me is, is may come at this from an emotional standpoint, but at the same time, I feel a sense of being guarded right now because Ren has such a songwriting skill, such, a, such an ability with words and with music and with compositions that I also don't want to miss technicalities and meanings and his literary art, right? There's so many different things he integrates that are fascinating. So I'm just going to take it in and see what I pull out. And I'm excited to see what you have pulled out, what it means to you. Comment below. Where are you watching from? And without further ado, let's dive straight in. Here we go. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I. Falling through the cracks of the night sky. Light goes out on the other side Suicide, suicide, suicide Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I Treading on the tracks in the night time It never really felt like the right time Suicide, suicide, suicide I'm so fucking lonely beneath this Narcissistic, can't keep a secret Miscount sheep, I can't sleep, a misfit Some say trouble, but some say sadistic Bruises my brother, one time or the other My skin felt counterfeit, silicone rubber Okay, let, let me rewind I have so many thoughts already But I don't like talking about it too much in between So let me just say this Amazing music video Amazing cinematography The animations here Phenomenal um, I love how it totally surprised me Even the way that it started I hear suicide I'm thinking sad ballad Something that sounds heartbreaking Depressing Tragic from the get-go Yet the beat is upbeat to me. There's something about this consistent rhythmic, these consistent rhythmic elements, the kick drum, the beat that comes in, that almost gives it a, an upbeat feeling. However, cyclical. We see the city, we see things that almost spinning, which can be exciting if you're on a roller coaster, but can be depressing when you're going through the motion. So for the beat to come in the way that it does, on one hand, it feels upbeat. On the at the same time, it feels cyclical right you're going through the motions and when you feel depressed when you are considering suicide I think that sometimes that is part of what adds to the despair another morning another evening right you don't want to get up out of bed you're so dis you're so distraught at the fact that the world keeps turning and you don't know how many more times you can turn with it and uh, so there's elements here that psychologically to me fit the idea of wanting to end even things saying things like a lights out you know on the, across town another light out suicide wow wow let me not say too much more i want to start over i want to try to take in as much as i can keep in mind this is going to be influenced by my observations the observer influences the observation as dr yalom beautifully says and 
it's going to be influenced also by my experiences, not only what I know and education, but also personal experience. So bring in your own, try to come with as limited bias confirmation as possible. Open your heart up to what we could pull out of this together and let's enjoy this together. Let me start over. I also love that they have the suicide and crisis lifeline right below, right immediately below, which to me from the get-go says, okay, there's hope. There's an element of hope here. And side note, what a powerful song to put out a few weeks after CNN completely just took things he said out of context. They're talking about the dangers of TikTok and social media and encouraging young kids to harmful behavior. And they quote a piece of Ren, which I would argue Ren's work is the opposite thereof. It is encouraging people. It's talking about heavy things with the purpose of hope, with the purpose of standing up, as we see in High Ren, with the purpose of choosing life. And so... That was a whole spiel of CNN pulling things out of context. And now a few weeks later, Homeboy puts out a video called Suicide. I mean, the creative mastery here, including things like, again, the pig mask, that red thread we see in High Ren and Sick Boy, in a list of our time, all these different songs he's put out that are part of this, this work that have that red thread. I applaud that. And, and so much more. We won't even go into the details of the sadistic and the narcissistic. The uh, um, English literary art elements he integrates continuously in his bars is phenomenal it is beyond a simple rhyme and the more we learn about english literary art ela and the more we note about alliterations and similes and metaphors and analogies and all these different things that we can use in language to convey and communicate the more fascinated it becomes when you see how much he actually does that it's a poet man let me start over it's a catchy tune as as sadistic as that may sound. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I. Falling through the cracks of the night sky. A light goes out on the other side. Suicide, suicide, suicide. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I. Treading on the tracks in the night time. It never really felt like the right time. Suicide, suicide, suicide I'm so fucking lonely beneath this Narcissistic, can't keep a secret Miscount sheep, I can't sleep, a misfit Some say trouble, but some say sadistic Bruises my brother, one time or the other My skin felt counterfeit, silicone rubber Bruises my sister, skin pop the blister Dig deep, resist the feeling when it hits ya Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I Falling through the cracks of the night sky A light goes out on the other side Suicide, suicide, suicide Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I Treading on the tracks in the night time It never really felt like the right time Suicide, suicide, suicide So fucking washed up and seasick Masochistic kid with a split lip Six feet deep, I can't eat, I'm nervous Won't stay down cause my body purges Useless my mother, can't keep in my supper Skin so pale cause my cheeks leak colour Truth is my father, you choose your karma Draw for the sword then drive through the armour Oh I, oh I, oh I Falling through the cracks of the night sky A light goes out on the other side Suicide, suicide, suicide Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I Treading on the tracks in the night time It never really felt like the right time Suicide, suicide, suicide Suicide, suicide, suicide Suicide, suicide, suicide There are so many elements. I, I feel like I should be taking notes, you guys, from the shifting in the uh, the cin cinematography and animation. Excuse me in his face, whereas not much is changing with his jacket. And it's always so cool, his, his attire and uh, just his, his uh, brand is not a good word, I feel, but his just his style, okay? Um, but there's a lot of shifting in animation when it comes to his face and his brain, which almost looks like it's alternating between his face and a skeleton fitting to suicide and the other skeletons in this music video, as well as just a lot going on, which to me could be a reflection on that battle in the mind, right? All the thoughts and all the imagery and all the struggle that happens in a person's mind when they're considering suicide, when they're struggling with suicide. 
I don't think I've ever seen a music video with this type of animation. I've seen animated music videos and drawings and I've seen paintings where, you know, you can see features that are represent here. But it's so... What is the word? Trailblazer. It's a trailblazing. It's very AI. And to me, that's like, dude, is thinking ahead. It's very much trailblazing into what is trending right now. These AI images and these these uh, generated images. And that too, psychologically can fit to this idea of, of suicide and people who struggle with depression. And I'm not speaking for everyone who's ever considered it or has done that, but I'm saying in the sense of AI and this idea of things trying to be perfect, this idea of things artificially being intelligent, artificially being generated. Um, just we live in a world that is very depressing to some people where there is a lot of beauty, but there's also a lot of, of destruction. And with the whole world of social media, AI, animation, comes a lot of loneliness, incredible loneliness, many people lonely behind their screens. And so while things seem perfect, artificially, intelligently, perfectly designed, right? No flaws. You can Photoshop everything and you can look perfect and you can paint on your makeup on a screen if you wanted to, while the reality behind it looks completely different. The more we move towards all this artificialness, the lonelier people are getting because we're not genuine. So even using an animated movie that has these AI elements to me fits to this idea, a, a, a stark contrast between what we're actually talking about. We're talking about suicide, not fitting in narcissistic, sadistic, right? Despair, you know, just a heavy, heavy topic. And he is not shying away once again from talking about heavy things, but he's doing it in such an artistic currently relevant way and even hearing him sing more I, I like that a lot right we've seen different facets of of Ren his guitar playing skills his singing his singing voice beautiful his um rapping skills phenomenal right we've seen very provocative elements that are more uh, challenging when I say provocative I mean challenging right questioning makes you wonder makes you debate makes you consider um animalistic as we saw with the animal kingdom right where he's handling heavy topics and he's so much that we could explore where right? when it comes to human behavior and societies and that switch from being the animal to now animals ruling and uh, some of you have said some phenomenal things when it comes to how we could interpret that how the musical video is inspired by animal farm by george orwell and there's so many things we can take away from these different pieces of work he's been putting out here too i know i'm gonna miss things and i hate it but I'm going to, I'm trying to just take it all in. And there's, there's so many facets, even him walking around in the city, that concrete jungle, right? It doesn't feel like freedom, right? It would be hard to, there's something about being surrounded by people and yet lonely, being surrounded by this concrete jungle of buildings going up everywhere versus being in nature and where there's peace, where there's beauty. Not that you can't be depressed if you're in nature, of course, but there's this stark contrast, I feel, when we are in this clustered hustle bustle of a city that just enhances the feelings of loneliness. There's so many elements here that are fittingly chosen and maybe not even intentional, as I've been noticing. Some things that Ren does just kind of happen. That they're more out of fun. They just kind of evolve. And then we can pull different things out of it and interpret it however we like. But let me just go back just a bit. Suicide, suicide, suicide. That musician there busking on that subway down there, is that maybe a reference to his busking days and his, you know, beginnings being a street musician? It's interesting. Suicide, suicide, suicide. It's hard to take off from the ground when your wings are cut Your stomach burns when you're drinking from an empty cup You know the entire ocean came from my tear ducts I see the world through Fibonacci sequences and double dutch I guess there's some that's born lucky, there's some that's not I tried to cut away my bitterness, hatchet job I locked my youth inside a trunk, inside a pickup truck Then dumped the whole thing over that same bridge the night you jumped I think about that sometimes, vividly What it felt like to look down and see tranquility One sudden movement in the world of possibility Only one movement to expose our fragility 
I fucking miss you and I miss myself I miss thinking we were indestructible as well I miss chilling by the pier cave and kicking back with Callum Hugo Say you're Justin Stevie and the fucking lads I miss missing that I numb myself to close the gap I never even call them up, the distance is my plaster cast The truth is that the day you jumped, my childhood jumped too But I still can't find that anger, all I find is missing you, man I miss you with all my rhymes I picture running five minutes quicker I'm right on time I picture pulling you back over the edge And then we're crying And holding you my brother And telling you that it's fine Not the way that it works Cause I was late like a jerk There's not a day where I could find a way To break from the hurt Your body missing So we never got to wave to the hearse I hope you're listening I love you man I miss you absurd Fuck Ren, I'm so sorry. Guys. Uh yeah. You you uh hmm. This is good. This is important. And it's not good because it's good in the sense of happy, great, kumbaya. No, this is good because we need to talk about these things. And it's bringing awareness to things that have to be talked about. For those of you, for those of us who have wanted to die. And for those of us who have lost people or almost lost people to suicide. We need to talk about that. You guys know I have often talk about existential fears and death anxiety. Being inspired by Dr. Um, Erwin Yalom's work. An author, a psychoanalyst, psychologist. Just a, a, a very a genius mind in my opinion. And one of the things I love when he talks about staring at the sun in his book, Staring at the Sun, he talks about the need to talk about death, to look death and in, in, to look at death, to look it in the face, right? Whereas it's not beneficial for us to stare at the sun. It can harm us. Um, we need to stare at the sun in the sense of we need to stare at death. We need to talk about it. And uh, that sounds morbid, literally, Right. Um, I find comfort uh, at cemeteries as dark as that sounds. I find them very peaceful. Um, there's something just comforting about it, you know, for different reasons. But not because, you know, we, we, we sometimes people that talk about death or that want to deal with it or that listen to music about it. We sometimes, or at least in the past, you know, people may have boxed them in. Oh my goodness, emo, goth, right? Words are thrown around where we, where we box people in because we try to make sense of what doesn't make sense to us. But most people, I think we don't want to talk about death or we don't want to be in the presence of it because it's uncomfortable. It's too painful to bear. What do you say to someone who's lost their loved one other than empty words like my condolences, I'm sorry for your loss. We say these things trying to offer comfort, knowing very well it won't do a thing. Because when you are in that pain, only you know the extent thereof and the suffering and the heartbreak that comes with it. So it is hard, it's uncomfortable to be in the presence of suffering, of death. It's overwhelming and we don't talk about it, right? And everything in life needs to be in measure, right? If we were to just talk about death, well, some might argue, well, then we're missing living, right? But the same goes vice versa, in my opinion. If we're only so focused on living, chasing dreams, chasing success, beauty, youth, and immortality, but we actually don't process the fact that we will die and that we have a limited time, then vice versa, our life may, not, may also not be as full as it could be because we cherish it more when we know that it's a limited commodity. It's easy to take things for granted when you think that you have an endless amount of it. You become more appreciative when you know that you cannot have all of it, right? When you receive a real diamond, not the man-made one, no cubic zirconia. When you re receive a real diamond that has been, that has come, that is natural, that has come into existence through pressure, through years and years, you value that, especially if you don't have any of them, right? The more you have of it, the less rare it becomes, the less more, the less appreciative you can be. And that goes for everything, including our breath, including the days we have. And so when Ren first started in this song, in, his, in this latest masterpiece of his, for me, my focus was, let me see what kind of literary art I can pull out. Let me try to pay attention to the music video. Let me make sure that I, you know, notice any references. 
But at the same time, I want to be open hearted to it. I don't want to be too closed off. And so we, even within myself, there's this dance and duality of I want to come at this professionally. I want to educate. I want to notice things. But I also want to be open hearted and empathetic towards what's happening. And so at first, when he came in and there was all these artistic elements, it was a little easier just to look at this objectively. Okay. And then the end, the switch, even in composition, it going down to the basic piano playing, that beautiful um, composition, just broken down, stripped down to a very, very raw moment of Ren genuinely crying, speaking to his, his brother, his friend who he lost to suicide. And he's spoken on this in some of his interviews. I had the honor of interviewing him. Check that out if you haven't yet. What a special, special human being we can learn so much from. And what was so special about it is that there was room for us to converse, which I think makes it all the more special. He is, he's a humble guy. He knows of his own humanity. He is aware of his own tendencies. And I think there is a lot of wisdom in self-awareness like that. And I think his rawness and his self-awareness and his willingness to be open to the world, his willingness to be wrong, which is really something exemplary we can all take a, a page from, that I think... I think allows him to dive deep into some of these emotions and to dive deep into his creative art, right? The more where we are of our world around us, of ourselves, the more we can dive into some of these heavy topics and he's not shying away from it, but it takes courage and he does it in such a masterful way. But I think that still does take a lot of courage to open your heart up and to say the things he says, including how, if I read it and understood it correctly, how he doesn't go see those other mates anymore, right? There's this gap, there's this, this pain, and he tries to, you know, compensate for it, right? It's, we'll talk about the lyrics in a second. There, there's so much, oh, but the, the final part really it made it difficult for me just to look at it objectively and try to analyze it. It just got emotional because suicide is such a heavy topic. And, and before we go any further, guys, there is a hotline that he lists immediately under the video. So listen to the video yourself if you like. Talk to someone today. Look at the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Reach out to someone. Google it for your country. I know you're watching from all around the world. Find someone you can talk to. Life is worth living. Before we dive into his lyrics, I want to say this because I know some of y'all check out. There is a one in a 400 trillion chance that you would have been born. Now, the numbers vary, right? There's articles that try to elaborate and dive into, is that actually a factual number, 400 trillion? What does that even mean? I mean, think of it this way. Just to compare that, I've read that you're more likely to be struck by lightning 11 times in your life. Or I've read that if you started a business today and you made 1 million every single day, 365 days, it would take you almost 3,000 years, 2,723 years to make 1 trillion. So to think that the odds of you being born, right? That one sperm that made it to the egg to be, to be, to come into existence, to be formed and evolve into a little human, to then be born a one in a 400 trillion, a number that our brain can't even comprehend a one in a 400 trillion chance. It is incredibly rare. It is so rare that you were born. It is a miracle. And why do I say that? Because sometimes it helps to look at things statistically. It's one thing to tell people emotionally, your love, there's a reason for you to live and you might need that. But sometimes it's also good to say, listen, the fact that you were born is a one in a 400 trillion chance. A very, 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 I'm not going to say every 400 trillion times, improbable possibility yet you're here. That means there's something incredibly rare about you, incredibly valuable. And that may go over some of your heads that may not pierce you the way it may pierce others. But I need you to hear me that your life is worth living. And I'm saying this now before we dive into the lyrics, because before some of you drop off, I want you to hear that there is a reason you were born. And you might say, well, you know, she's just saying that to everybody. What does that have to do with me? If you need to hear this, if there's something in you that go that goes that resonates with you. Maybe even part of you that wants to rebel against it. Ugh, I don't want to talk about this right now. Why? Why is there something in some of us that goes, I don't want to talk about why I matter. I don't want to talk about that probability because sometimes it's easier to drown out the facts. Sometimes it's easier to push it aside and to cling to our suffering and our misery because we think we don't deserve better because we think there is no hope and no restoration possible. So I don't even want to listen to hope. I don't even want to listen to the facts, the numbers, scientifically, religiously, philosophically, however you want to look at it, 
where many agree that the probability is very low. Even emotionally, many of us, when someone says something encouraging, it resonates with some of us, but many of us who have been hurt and guarded, we are hesitant to open our heart up to love, hesitant for someone to say, hey, you are loved. Your life is worth living. And part of us shrinks away and goes, that's nice to hear, but mm, I can't, I can't open that door. There's too much pain there. There's too much suffering. I don't want to think about it. It's easier to not deal. But then you go through the motions and you wake up and every so often, as he said in his lyrics, that urge comes up. What if? And, and it's, it's a hard place. I, I know from own experience of not wanting to live anymore. I have seen suffering. And there have been times where I did not want to live anymore. And I didn't want to kill myself. I didn't want to commit suicide. Because for religious reasons at the time, you know, I thought there would, come, there would be certain consequences with that. My thinking has shifted since then. But at the time, there was this combination of religious reasons why I, you know, didn't want to do that. There were reasons such as I don't want to hurt my family. I don't want to leave them behind. I felt a sense of responsibility for taking care of them. So I would cry and I would ask God to take me because I was in so much pain. And maybe you're in pain like that too. There was somebody very close to my family who did try to hurt themselves by drinking pure alcohol. A person who often said, they don't know how much longer they'll be around. And I would wake up and I would cry and pray as a young teenage girl for God to spare this person. And they're still around. Not always thriving the way that they could, but that's due to own choices. But you see, I have seen pain and I'm telling you, I know you I have too. Many of you are hurting. Maybe you have hurt and you've overcome. Maybe you're still hurting. Maybe you question your purpose. If you're hearing this, there's a reason you're still here. And I urge you to reach out for help. I don't want to just encourage you to fight because some of you have no fight left. Some of you are so weary that the thought seems more enticing than the alternative. Please ask for help. You don't have to fight alone. And try to open your heart up to these words. Try to open your heart up either to the emotional urge and pleading that I'm doing with you. Or open yourself up to the statistics of the fact that there are numbers to prove that it is very improbable that you would have been born. Yet you're here and you're breathing. And that is a miracle. And regardless of your belief what comes after. If you had, there's a heaven or reincarnation or there's nothingness. And it goes back to the way it was before birth. Where we kind of just don't know. And we're not. Whatever your beliefs are. Whatever you hope or believe in or choose not to believe in you have this one life that's the one thing we can tangibly measure because we're literally experiencing it right now and restoration is possible you may not ever recover back what has been taken from you or what you've done or what you've lost the people you've lost will never come back on this earth as it is the people the things you've experienced can never be undone but restoration and recovery is possible I needed to say this now before we dive into the lyrics, guys, because I need, I, need, I need you to hear this. And I hope that this work by Ren, this masterpiece, really inspires you to deal with these heavy topics. Fallen through the cracks of the night sky, a light goes out on the other side. Suicide, suicide, suicide. And the way he keeps saying that, it's so catchy for one, which I know sounds morbid because of the, with the topic, but it's such a catchy hook. He's really good at writing songs that are easy to listen to, that are pleasant, that get stuck in your head. Um, but it's, it's a good hook that makes for good songwriting. The light going out, right? Suicide, another person that's lost their life. So many people every day that are choosing that path, that are hurting and lonely, treading on the tracks in the nighttime. Okay, I like that, that play here, night sky, nighttime. It never really felt like the right time. Okay, that too, right? Especially for those left behind are going... What? Right? They're so shocked. It's like, why now? Right? This person died too soon. It wasn't their time. They shouldn't have gone. But also the person that is considering suicide will say things or maybe feel that way. It doesn't feel like the right time. Should I do it now? Should I wait till tomorrow? And I think part of that is because we do long to live. Deep, deep down inside, many want to be rescued. And those who really take that final step of attempting or even succeeding at ending their lives, it's never the right time. I'm so effing lonely beneath this narcissistic, can't keep a secret, miscount sheep, I can't sleep. And that wordplay, guys, just to switch away from the, the sadness and the emotional for a second, let's, be, let's take a step back rationally. The skill here, miscount sheep, I can't sleep. Even using words like sheep, having the pig mask, right? Fitting to that red thread of his whole album, his whole work, the, the, the sick boy. The references to sick boy, by the way, was awesome. It was sick boy. Ha <laughs> ha, see what I did there? Um... Fitting to Animal Kingdom, right? Which again, that 
unique music video play on Orwell's Animal Farm. The idea of being an animal, now animals taking over, that switch from a societal standpoint can be looked at in a, on a macro level, right? How a society shifts from, you have those who are treating others like animals who are conquering them, right? The farmer, and now things switch and the animals take over, but it becomes just as sadistic and it becomes just as butcher, massacre, animalistic, right? That very fits very much to what's happening in our world. We're quick to, and often rightfully so, to criticize politics, criticize those who are leading. We're criticizing the corruption. And then the people take over. They protest. They want to fight for justice. But if we're not careful, we flip the tables. And now we, the animals who are in charge, are doing the same thing, maybe even worse. There's wisdom in being self-aware and going, we're all capable of crazy things, right? Just because the tables have turned doesn't mean it gets better. References in Animal Kingdom, references in Sick Boy, references and all these different music videos and songs so here using the word sheep having the pig mask again fitting to this to this theme also fitting to the idea of narcissistic right words like narcissistic sadistic fitting to having the pig mask again which could be a reflection on corrupt systems right money greed but the wordplay here sheep sleep some say troubled but some say sadistic interesting bruises my brother one time or the other and that, I feel like, can be taken a different way. Bruising, right? That often happens to people who are depressed, anxious, may be self-harming, cutting or hurting themselves in different ways, bruising themselves. But it also bruises the brother. It bruised him in this case, losing his brother. His brother bruising himself, ending his life. Bruised Wren severely and his friends. My skin felt counterfeit, silicone rubber. Interesting, which also works with that rubber animal mask, but also this idea of you're not at home in your own skin. It's counterfeit. It's fake. Artificial. Counterfeit. Silicone rubber. Those are artificially created elements fitting to that AI, that artificial cinematography here. Bruises my sister. Skin pop the blister. D Dig deep, resist the feeling when it hits you, okay? So bruising, cutting, picking, different references perhaps to both self-harm leading up to suicide as well as the psychological and emotional pain here. Fallen through the cracks of the night sky, a light goes out on the other side and then the chorus repeats. Sick boy, sick boy, bitten by a tick boy. I feel like it's not me, it's the world that's sick. So that reference to sick boy and that too an interesting way not only to tie his work together but fitting to the topic suicide because whereas others may say oh something's wrong with you right you were bitten by a tick this is what caused your issue in Ren's case Lyme disease saying I feel like it's not me it's the world that's sick using that reference fits to this topic because when you feel when you're considering ending your life and you feel so sad and discouraged a lot of times there is this feeling of loneliness incredible loneliness i feel like it's not me it's the world that's sick something's wrong in this place i have to leave and some very well may think something's wrong with me i gotta go i don't want to burden anyone else anymore i i'm in the way but oftentimes it's also like wait a minute no the world around us something's not right over here there's there's so many ways to look at this right the world that spins the the elements that were going around in the music video i'm so effing washed up and seasick and that is heavy because of the way that his friend passed and the way they never found his body, right, at the, at the river. Masochistic kid with the split lip. Is that a, a word play here in regards to his ability for songwriting and poetry and rapping, right? Split lip can be um, like a speech impediment, right? Someone that has um, something that they struggle with, right? It could be seen as something negative, but it could also be a, a playful reference to his do what he does, right? Um, six feet deep, I can't eat, right? When death, when someone's buried six feet deep, I'm nervous, won't stay down because my body purges. And that could be a reference to his physical ailments to a degree, but also what happens to people who are grieving both the loss of someone who's ended their life and those who are considering ending their life, right? You can't eat, you can't sleep. Useless, my mother can't keep in my supper. Skin so pale because my cheeks leak color. The wordplay, truth is my father. You chose. You choose your karma. Draw this. Draw for the sword that drive through the armor. Wow. You choose your karma, right? You choose your fate. Draw for the sword that drive through the armor. That final piercing, and then back through the to the chorus. Suicide, suicide. It's hard to take off from the ground when your wings are cut. 
Your stomach burns when you're drinking from an empty cup. And that is interesting because I feel like this sentence, when your wings are cut, implies this idea of you can't do anything about it, right? To me, at least. When a bird's wings have been cut, it's not the bird's fault, but we can't expect them to fly. And so when someone is struggling with depression and anxiety, it's useless. It's unkind. It's meaningless to say, well, just fight, you know, get your act up, get fly, do the best, choose life, right? To someone who is so lonely and in despair, they need help. They need someone to sit with them in that suffering and to help mend their wings or maybe fly for them for the, for a while. But I think there's, there's a, a something here that just implies or that is a reminder, a humble reminder to all of us to really approach this topic with empathy beyond just fly, you know, take off. You can do this fight. It's not that simple. Your stomach burns when you're drinking from an empty cup. Powerful. The literary art here, guys. You know the entire ocean came from my tear ducts, all right, suffering pain. I see the world through Fibonacci sequences and double dutch. Double dutch makes me think of what kids, um, what kids do when they're playing uh, double dutch with the, with the uh, I'm sorry, I can't think of it. The sport, <laughs> when they're doing the, um, the long ropes, they're jumping around the ropes. But in slang, it means nonsense and gibberish. So, and Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers where each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. So, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. So, each number is the sum of the two numbers that came before. So, 1, 1 equals 2. And three equals five. And it's just, it's neat, you know, how he's even integrating these things. I see the world through Fibonacci sequences, right? Maybe saying everything that you add up leads to the next number. Or, you know, speaking of a pattern, perhaps, if you will, double dutch, also a pattern turned by two people. So just as much as Fibonacci sequences have two numbers that add up to the sum of the next, double dutch, you have two people spinning the ropes and the, the jumper has to slip in between. And of course, there's different tricks that can make it more difficult where it's harder to expect to know what you to expect and how to jump. There's so many ways to even interpret that. But seeing the world through that, maybe saying it's ta it takes two to get to that result, maybe saying you have to keep adding up to know what, to happen what happens next, even with double dutch, right? You have to keep assessing both sides somehow to figure out what are they doing. They have to work together to keep the rope fairly moving otherwise you're just going to get tangled up just the, the the profoundness of his lyrics but even how it rhymes and flows tear ducts double dutch i guess there's some that's born lucky there's some that's not and that too works with the wings being cut right this idea of some are born with that struggle it's not something that they're choosing it's not people just being lazy or choosing not to fight i tried to cut away from my bitterness hatchet job interesting animal farm I concept here. I locked my youth inside a trunk, inside a pickup truck, then dumped the whole thing. And a pickup truck, youthfulness that works together, right? Um, over that same bridge, the night you jumped. And then it goes into those final verses. I think about that sometimes vividly, what it felt like to look down and see tranquility. And that is interesting too, right? When we deal with death or we lose somebody, there's both that despair, that pain, as well as looking down at tranquility, there's, it's peaceful, it's tranquil, it's calm. And this person who ended their life longed for that. They longed for peace. And there's such a contradiction because you're drowning in pain, yet you see calmness. One sudden move in a world of possibility, right? That one final jump, a world of possibilities, though, a world of alternate realities that could have occurred. One movement to expose our fragility, right? We are fragile as human beings. We're hurting. Tranquility, possibility, fragility. Also beautifully meshed here together, but fitting, right? It's not just random words that rhyme. It's, it's po poignant is the word, or it's, it's specific. I effing miss you. I miss myself. And that is powerful. It's getting very personal here because that's also part of that pain, right? You miss the person that, you, that, they, that you've lost, but you lose yourself in the process, your childhood. He said, my childhood jumped too, All right? His innocence is gone after going through something like this. I miss thinking we're indestructible. I miss chilling by the pier cave and kicking back. Oof. I can imagine my own friends, you know, my own times of hanging out with my friends, my college years, your youthful years, right? You have these memories with someone you love and he lists all his different friends and the effing lads. I miss, I miss missing that. Wow.
you get so numb, you get so, you're so deep in despair that you can't even miss that anymore. You even miss missing that. I numbed myself to close the gap. Yeah, you can't feel that anymore. I never even call them up. The distance is my plaster cast. Mm. The truth is that the day you jumped, my childhood jumped too, but I still can't find the anger. All I find is missing you, right? There's, we go through different stages, sometimes anger, denial, grief, and sadness. But when you're in that place where you just miss the person, you can't even be mad. You're just hurting. I miss you with all my rhymes. I picture, which it's such a, such a, um, such a way to honor his friend to say that I miss you with all my rhymes, all these things that Ren is doing, rhyming, creating, keeps putting work out for us to sit here and applaud and be amazed by, but he misses his friend. He's there's, there's Ren. And that also shows his humanity here with all his rhymes, all his work he's putting out inside, deep inside, a big part of his heart will always be with that friend, missing that friend. Right. And that's how it works. We, we keep creating, we keep doing, we keep going through life, sometimes hurting and struggling ourselves. But so much of what we do is so connected to the people we've lost and it'll always be that way. And I think that's can be a very painful thing, but it can also be a beautiful way of honoring those people that they keep living on in our hearts and in our memories. I picture running five minutes quicker. I'm right on time. And so he's talking here now about how he wished he would have made it to that bridge quicker to save his friend because he had gotten that call from a fellow friend and he was trying to get to his friend and he got too late. I picture pulling you back over the edge and then we're crying, holding you, my brother, and telling you that it's fine. That's not the way I worked because I was late like a jerk. So maybe even blaming himself to a degree here, there's not a day where I could find a way to break from the hurt, your body missing so we never got to wave to the hearse. I hope you're listening. It's heavy. The hearse is um, the, the, the vehicle that carries the coffin. I hope you're listening. I love you, man. I miss you. Absurd. The, just the, the level of pain, even with the way that he was saying, speaking this, and then getting very personal with us here. Beautiful work and well done because it needs to be talked about. Guys, thank you for... for holding me accountable to check this out sooner than later, please seek help if you're hurting. Please know that there's a very little probability that you would even be here to begin with, but you are, and there's purpose for your life. There's help available. You don't have to fight alone. I hope you know you're loved today, and I hope that if you see this, that this can be your reminder not to, to take that jump, but instead to choose to stand up and dance in the light so you can leave a legacy and you can tell other people your story, how close you got and how now you're living life to the fullest, honoring all those who didn't have that option, honoring all those who have who we have lost before, honoring all those who've already breathed their last breath and leaving a legacy for those to come to show them what it means to choose life. Keep going. I'll see you guys on the next ride. Thank you for being part of this journey with me today. I hope you know you're loved. Ayo. Hey